What's the time you've heard someone speaking about something you're knowledgeable in and thought to yourself this person has no idea what they are talking about? I work as an asset manager from a bank. It's amazing to hear people talk about the stock market, but actually have no clue, let alone derivatives. Absolutely, I've spent years studying this stuff, and it's amazing what I still don't know, but I hear people commenting on finance all the time, as if they understood it. What's really scary is all my students, who are now loose in the city and on Wall Street, I taught them, scares the shit out of me that they are now responsible for so much of other people's money. Luckily though Wall Street mismanaging money has no major ramifications for everyone else. R slash Wall Street but can confirm. Oh god. History class. People would play world at war once and instantly become WW2 gods. Like bruh, bruh, I'm just finishing up my masters in medieval history slash lit. Fewer than 10k words to go. Woo. And the frequency with which I hear stuff like that's what it was like back then makes me want to gnaw off my own face. When. Where. The medieval period spans more than a thousand years, so long that we split it into sub-periods, and covers millions of square miles. Even if you pretend nothing existed outside of Europe, trying to pretend that anything was handled uniformly throughout the period is ridiculous. Still. People make these sweeping statements, based on nothing more than their knowledge of video games, movies and fantasy novels. I usually don't even bother engaging anymore. Hey, some things qualify. They all breathed there back then. Back then no one had rockets that could reach the moon, people were up to 60% water back then. People could, however, gnaw their own faces off. People like to talk about chemical compounds in food. But 99% of them don't even know what the aminosids are. 5G food. It's turning the coronavirus gay. I know this was meant as a joke. But part of me was thinking oh here we go. Did you know? It's fact that the coronavirus came from the gays. Said ex-friend who was on something. And it was then. That I realized she was homophobic and hated that. Though honestly. I think she may be homophobic in a jealousy type of way and not generally. Zero. Zero. Ever been to a car meet? I'm a mechanical engineer specializing in automotive design. I'm also a woman. I could not begin to explain all of the stupid bullshit I've been told over the years. I've had people claim to have built the turbo system that I personally built for my car. Can you clear something up for me? Do racing stripes actually make cars go faster? 10% faster with an additional one. 5% if they are actual paint and not vinyl. Don't forget the stickers on the back adding at least 5 horsepower. What are you some sort of poser? Everyone knows the ridges on stickers. Create more drag and slow down a car. Well. I wouldn't describe myself and knowledgeable about this. I'm an advanced novice at best. But I've been learning Japanese for a couple of years. I have decent tourist Japanese. And can read Japanese at about the level of a Japanese 7 year old. Well. Just before Christmas a new guy started at work. Total. Complete and utter weeb. He insists he's a fluent Japanese speaker. But the thing is. He totally isn't. I think he knows maybe 10 Japanese words. But every single day he's like well. As they say in Japan. And then he'll talk absolute gibberish. Like. Literally just string vaguely Japanese sounding syllables strung together. Like well. As they say in Japan kaichoji ku no enai nakata. It's totally meaningless, and when he does use an actual Japanese, it's totally out of context. He spilled his drink once and exclaimed ah. Shushin wa dokodisu cab. Literal translation ah. Where is your hometown? I didn't call him out on it. Basically because it's just flat out hilarious. But what was really hilarious is, that one of my best friends is Japanese, and she dropped by work one day to ask if I wanted to go to lunch with her. And I couldn't resist. She walked up to my desk. Said hello. I responded in Japanese. We had a quick chat. In my very basic. Broken Japanese. And the dude looked at me. Like he'd just shat his pants. I noticed he was very reluctant to talk about his extensive knowledge of Japanese after that. I don't understand people who have to act this way. Jesus even when I knew what I was saying I was so shy to speak in my Japanese class. I do remember, being in my first year I mentioned to a friend of my sister, that I was learning the language. 
He asked me to write out I'm a non-practicing Buddhist. I insisted I had no fucking clue where to start, since we were only halfway through Katakana, let alone deeper sentence structure. He insisted I try. I think I wrote, all in here again up, I do not learn Buddhist now, or something horribly atrocious like that. Made him happy though, since he had no idea what I wrote. Man. I think the guy just wanted to be unique, or stand out without the effort. Also some tend to believe their own lies so maybe he started fooling himself too. Well until op made a bigger fool of him. Like half the time people mention specific psychiatric diagnosis. Literally everyone on reddit. They must be a narcissist. She might have BPD. Have you looked into it? JFC shut the fuck up. So you've seen r slash relationship advice comments. Yeah. The abusive person equals mentally ill person seems to be so common over there it really upsets me. I struggle with mental illness. Have a lot of friends with other mental illnesses. And one of my closest friends has BPD. People seem to think they are knowledgeable about psychology slash psychiatry, but in most cases they are just extremely prejudiced. As someone who does assessments for a living, it bothers me too. Anytime a personality disorder gets thrown around I have to stop myself from engaging with the post and stating that it takes at least a year of working with someone to diagnose a personality disorder. Additionally people can just be assholes without having any clinically significant symptoms aside from being an asshole. When my friend was explaining what timbre was, and I was like, bruh, no saxophone notes and the only thing that has timbre. Literally anything that makes noise has timbre. Nah, only lumberjacks have timbre. And even then. Only immediately after cutting down a tree. Nah, pirates have timbres that shiver. Yeah. And where do you think they got those timbres? That's right. They stole them from honest, hardworking lumberjacks. We are fucking pirates. Dude. We steal. You're just jealous cause we got the timbers and the fashion. Silk. Flannel. I'm an electrical engineer, and overheard a guy in a model shop buying a radio controlled car for his kid. He didn't know whether to buy the fast charger or the slow charger. The difference is that with the fast charger you get your charge quicker, but pay the price in reduced battery life. That is it causes more damage. The bullshitting salesman managed to sell both to him with an assurance that the fast charger will make the car run for 5 minutes, but the slow charger will make it run for half an hour. When did you see a pint bottle that could hold a gallon if you dribbled the water in slowly? Salesmen are notoriously bad about this. I'm guilty of it myself when I was younger and had a sales gig. It's almost like playing poker at times lol your bluff has to be convincing enough to get people to bite. But I'm quite certain I never bullshitted in front of a furniture engineer, so I can see how your example would be annoying for you. Yeah the legs on this chair are each a foot long, which sounds low, but you gotta remember that there are four of them. So you're essentially four feet off the ground in this chair. No sir, please do not look at the chair. Apostrophe. I have worked retail for nearly two decades and I have customers constantly trying to tell me how to use my register. Like I haven't been doing this more than half my life. My roommates 20 years ago used to build registers for Wenders. I don't like sauces on my burgers. I basically became a trainer for the no print modify function. And if anyone came across a drive through with a scrolling middle finger they are deeply sorry. Tourists who have most likely never fished telling me. A long time fisherman. How to fish. Example. Random lady. I think you're using the wrong bait. A. I'm not using bait. I'm using a lure. B. How would you know what type of fish I'm even targeting? Bait. Lure. Same thing. Anyway you're probably turning the crank too fast and holding your stick wrong. Last year I saw a couple of articles about an eating disorder called Ufid which isn't that well known. Everyone in the comments sections were suddenly experts on this thing they'd never even heard of. Saying that it's people's own fault for having this disorder, or that it's not a real thing. There were a lot of r slash wow thanks imkid moments too. Some people have no sympathy at all, and can't even be bothered researching something for 2 minutes to find out that it's actually a serious thing. Oh my friend has that. It sounds extremely difficult, I've since picked his brain about it. He's told me about how long and difficult it is to get adjusted to eating a new food. The whole thing sounds wild. Misconceptions about what computer programming can do are rampant. 
since technology has become such an integral part of everything. People tend to spew nonsense about it. It used to kind of bug me, but there's nothing practical to be done. Really, might as well enjoy the notion that coding is magic and play along. Can you give an example? Examples in movies and TV shows are not hard to find. Who Jackman cracking RSA's 128-bit RC5 algorithm in a little over a minute while getting a blowjob and having a gun pointed at his head is an extreme example. At best, most shows try to make a mundane process dramatic. I get it. I'm pretty sure a show about someone writing code, testing, searching Google, testing, writing code, etc. won't attract many viewers. In real life, some non-programmers tend to think buzzwords like machine learning are short steps away from a Westworld-esque future. Can't believe nobody has made a hacker movie that's just a guy staring at GDB and drinking Mount Dew for 18 hours straight. You might enjoy the show Mr. Robot. It's a show that's known for its realistic hacking. I've just finished watching it a few weeks ago, and I thought it was pretty good. I'm a programmer too BTW. At an air show. I overhear a dude trying to impress his girlfriend with facts about a certain fighter jet. He said the external fuel tanks were bombs. Among other things. I was like 10 years old. A huge aviation buff. And I knew he was full of shit. I was in a museum. And it had an old auto gyro on the wall. This guy was spinning all kinds of bull about it. Early helicopter prototype ETC. With a girl listening very attentively. Strong date vibes. It killed me to bite my tongue. My job is technical and all the managers aren't. But every so often they'll try to explain something during a meeting that I have painstakingly explained to them. And they'll fail miserably. I won't ever correct them. Unless their mistake would have any bearing whatsoever. Which it won't normally. Having a manager who isn't qualified in your line of work is the worst. It can be absolutely fine. As long as they know what they do and don't understand and refer to you when needed my current boss and my last boss r slash were both excellent. Neither are anywhere near as technical as me, although they do have some knowledge. And both will happily refer things over to me when they don't have a clue. While being very careful to preface things they don't fully understand with a disclaimer. Only very occasionally will they accidentally commit to something that sounds easy to them, because it sounds like something else we do, but is actually more tricky than they think the problems come, when you have a manager who isn't qualified in your line of work, but thinks they are. That's when you run into issues. One of the best managers I've ever had knew almost nothing about how my job worked. What he didn't know was how to clear bureaucratic roadblocks and get extra support when required. He trusted me to do my job and made sure I could focus on it. Managing and leading a successful team doesn't require knowing how to do the jobs of those on your team. But whatever people who know how to manage do, I don't know. It's a level of charisma and confidence that seems exhausting to me. But having a good manager is the best thing in the world. Makes your life so much easier. We are boost talking about Japan. Literally anything they say. I lived in Japan for a little over 3 years and I know for a fact, 10 times over, that they would be made fun of over there. Their behavior is cringe as hell and makes me embarrassed on their behalf as they have no shame for themselves. BTS lovers talking about Korean culture applies too. I got into a heated debate with someone because she didn't believe ducks could fly. We were in animal science course. It still hurts, to be fair. Some parks do clip their wings in a way that makes them unable to fly, so they don't leave the pond. I can see how she could misunderstand that as ducks not being able to fly naturally. I'm on a PhD program now, and cringe when I read my college essays, and realized how confident I was for someone who knew very little of what they were talking about. We were taught to write as if we knew every ring about it in school. I hate it. I have no clue what I'm doing most of the time, and I'm just running iterations changing stuff that can be improved. This is the issue I have. Writing confidently about something you know little about can make you come across as an ass. Especially when it comes to synthesis of two ideas. Maybe they are related, and it's a good synthesis. But maybe they only look related, because there's something I don't know. Then again, if I were to write without pretending that I knew everything. I'd be qualifying literally every clause in one way or another. I recently got a good grade on a big paper I wrote this last year. 
damn near every source was a lie. I presented it, like I had read everything there was to read. In reality, I just nabbed small bites of ambiguous info from obscure books, and mashed it all into an agreed upon thesis. There are two types of successful writing in academics, well-run research, which does do the best, cause you can actually put forth confident knowledge, and verbal dick swinging. If you can swing a big enough dick, people will eventually be willing to overlook how the bullshit you flung isn't correct. Find the balance of the two, and you'll find there's a lot you can become an expert on. I agree though, that being overconfident on surface level knowledge is risky, because you can miss crucial details. This was a history paper, so it made my life less sketchy. I'm a teacher and once whilst observing another teacher's lesson it became painfully clear that they did not have a clue what they were talking about. Luckily, I guess, I shared the class with him. So in my next lesson I just taught it properly. That would be annoying for the students too having to pretty much forget everything they just learned and start over. Some stress involved in deciding which teacher to believe. To, yeah, this seems like a very strange arrangement. Two teachers, presumably co-teaching a class, not only teaching the same materials, but also apparently not communicating go one another about what they are teaching, to the point at which one feels they need to waste time reteaching a lesson. What real teacher has that kind of time to waste? It's a pretty normal arrangement in most schools in my country, especially with sixth form classes like this. We had communicated with each other and split the course in half. But like I said I just happened to watch him teach this bit and realized he was doing it wrong. It wasn't too hard for the students to know who to believe because the subject was normal distribution and standard deviation and they kept getting it wrong by trying to do what the other teacher said. If you become a part of the bears pack, almost like family, they will never attack you because they view you as one of their own. Except bears don't run in packs. That's just one of the things that confused the shit out of me about that statement. I think they were talking about wolves. Even if so that statement is still so untrue. They will kill any lone wolf that the pack comes across. And humans are not to be trusted. The woman I was talking to was most definitely talking about bears lol. We were having a conversation about why owning exotic animals wasn't just unethical but dangerous and she was trying to back up her reasoning behind wanting a monkey. It doesn't make sense at all for her to have said bear, but she did. If you are new to Tattletale TV, please subscribe. I have new videos every day. Stay tuned, right now, for another.